Good morning, guys. Here is my mama. Both in our pajamas. What are we making, mama? So it's actually a pancake mix that we were given. Buttermilk mix. My first time using pancake mix. Because we were given it, we're gonna waste it. We're gonna try it. And let's see. Let's see if we like it. Okay. Let me show you guys. I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys the mix. In case you're interested, it comes out well. This is the hungry jack. I'm sure the Americans will know. <laughs> I've never tried this stuff. You know, yeah, I don't really. I'm not really a fan of mixes. I always, I always think, what do they put inside? But I'm putting that aside today, let me just see what it's like. And I'm using my um, grill pan because my um, my skillet is is out of use. It's going to look and like pancakes. Yes. It's my skillet's out of use. It like yes, my skillet's out of use because I'm trying to I want to make potatoes in it later and it's got all this olive and and olive oil and herb seasoning on it. So yeah. Yes. Okay, one second, let me wait one second. Wait, wait, calm down. Gentle. Let's move this closer. Ooh! Nah. I don't know if it's delicious yet. All I did was add water to the mix, guys. So I don't have a control over the flavor. I only have control over. Let go, mommy. Mama, let go. Okay. Go, mommy. <laughs> You're the best. Oh, thank you, sweet I don't have control over the taste, just over the thickness. Let's just see how this works. Like the Mickey Mouse ears? Yes. Um, that is, it's like a square. Almost, not quite. Hey, this is our song right now. It's by Elevation. By Elevation um, and Maverick Music. Miracles of Miracles of Miracles. Millions of Miracles, that's what it's called. You like the song? It's a coincidence, it's not a The drums is not banging. I've got miracles, a miracle. Let's sing it. Million dollar miracle. Many little miracles. I've got miracles, a miracle. Sing it for me. It's a miracle. One, two, three, four. I can't even count them all. Stop playing, just sing. You don't want to sing it. Oh, I forget. Cause are you singing it? Miracles, a miracles. One, two, three, four. I can't even count no more. <laughs> hey, Fermi, are you doing your hair? Hey Fermi, are you doing your hair? Hey Fermi, are you doing your hair? Your hair, your hair. All oh, because of this. I don't even know what the show is. Shower on Netflix. Can you see it? Come and sit down, I'm taking out her hair. Come and sit down, please. Because, you know, half term. 
got to take out the hair. I can take my time with it. All that stuff. Is it your box? About your, you're trying to open my, the box. Anyway, um, I really can't be bothered, but I'm just glad I don't have to do everything in one day. Hallelujah. So much here. So much her. So much her. You got a lot of her, girl. You got a lot of her. 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 I like it when you do like her. <laughs> I think you will send me. She's not even sending me. Hello, Fermi. Enjoy it, cool. We're off to a play date, and the person that's this is for this Fermi's play date, right? Say hi, Mama. You're so cute. She picked her outfit herself. Mama, I'm not going to be scared. <laughs> Why would you be scared? No, I'm not scared. So she was ready since it's, we were waiting for Daddy. Ask us why, please. The shame of the woman, she kept by the John or Monge. Goodbye, goodbye, John. Sookie, Abby. John, Sookie. You're so cute, Mama. You're cute. Look at your cheeks. They're so cheeky. Zink cheeky. Yes. Your cheeks are zink cheeky. <laughs> All right, so we're off. We are off. Finally. We are late today. Why are we late? You know the other day. Why message her? Sorry. I don't know if they're there. Well, you know, Victoria and Rainsy. Yes. Oh. Let me type it this. Victoria. Oh, guys, if you don't know Victoria and Rainsy, you need to know. If you're a worshipper, then you'll need to know Victoria and Rainsy. She is a worshipper. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. No, amen. Amen. And then she just really puts me. Her music. Puts me, it really ministers to me and puts me in a place to pray like and to just really worship God. Amazing. Amazing! So we're on our way. Bye! Wow. Sounds really cool, though. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh no. Concentration on point. She has really good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, babe. Clap <laughs> Wow, no mercy. Good morning. We are on our way to church. Fermi, you are so cute. Hello, Baba. Off to church and late again. Flush. Actually, last week, last week we were all right. But this week, girl, I mean, boy. Flush. something to eat. Mm. Want to go to something to eat? Yes. What is something to eat? Hot dogs. <laughs> oh, Shana. <laughs> she, <laughs> ah, she said it yesterday. She was like, she was like, mommy, 
Um, am I gonna have hot dogs? I'm gonna have. We're gonna go to church and I'm gonna have hot dogs from last week. I like hot dogs. I know you like hot dogs. this song in my head I don't know if anyone knows this song like sin man be good I found don't buy you don't me thank God that God is not man because as much as there are good people they are not not all of us are really that good not as good as God hallelujah anyway so I was just thinking about you know I've made a lot of foolish decisions like like really si maybe like silly mistakes normal it's normal in life and it you know at the end of the day god is always good because <laughs> he always manages to put us back on track but i always but sometimes though the foolish the quote-unquote foolish de decisions are the ones that bring forth breakthrough right and and i would say one of the most foolish decisions i've ever made in my whole entire life was moving <laughs> to Nigeria I say that not because I'm moving to Nigeria but because I you know if you have seen my uh, <laughs> my first ever video on this channel it was when I first it was my first week that I'd moved to Nigeria and I'll, I'll you know I'll link it here so you guys can <laughs> see me all the way back when this channel was birthed and um just the fact that I left like comfort, you know, I was living at home with my mum and my and my siblings and you know I had a decent of you know very decent job getting paid a pretty decent wage in comparison to what I what I came to anyway, but you know, pretty decent you know, I was comfortable and you know I just I was comfortable and that made me uncomfortable. Does that make sense? No. So the fact that I got to a point in my life that I just felt like I needed to do more and I you know I just really felt the leading I believe that God led me 
to Nigeria. When I told my mum that time, she was just like, you know, I, you know, again, I've had her on the channel and I've expressed, and she's expressed that how she just thought, what are you thinking? What is the meaning? She just was like, she was convinced there was someone behind it, like maybe there was a guy that I was out here coming to meet or something. She just couldn't understand. And even when, and honestly for me as well, I was scared out of my way, like in deep down inside of me, I was like, this is crazy, like crazy. I don't have anyone I'm coming to meet in Nigeria. Why am I going there? Why do I feel like I need to be there? And it wasn't even like, yeah, obviously Instagram always makes Nigeria look a lot more shiny and everything, but it wasn't even that. I just believed that I just need to, needed to come here. And I didn't have a job when I first got here. I didn't have a job. I didn't even have a place to stay until the day before I left England. It was foolish by man's, by man's calculations, but it was totally spirit led. Like I believed it then and I still believe it now that, you know, God truly led my footsteps to Nigeria. Like I, the, the same person, the same person that came to Lagos all those years ago, as you'll see in that video, is not the same Yitunde that sits here making this video today. I am I'm a completely different person and I believe for the better. I think that my, my experiences in Nigeria, I've learned so much, like such a wealth of knowledge in like what, six, almost seven years that I've been here and about myself, about my relationship with God, like my relationship with God has grown exponentially. I am so grateful for that because I could not have lasted here if not for God. I had a ret I have always had a return ticket, <laughs> by the way, coming to Nigeria. When I got here, the first week, like I think the, th the first week I already started to feel homesick. The second week I was really sick, physically sick, like super ill. I had typhoid, I had malaria, I was mad ill. Like there were so many forces, like there were so many reasons for me to be like, you know what, I have a return ticket, let me come and be going back <laughs> to where I'm coming from. But I don't know, I just, I felt this strength and it could have only been from God that just to keep pushing that I just need to keep pushing. I just need, I almost felt like, am I doing like, I'm a survivor, survivor show. So, you know, you guys, if you know that survivor show, that reality show, like, you know, you go through all these wilderness trials just to get, to, you know, get the prize. I felt like that and I just felt like I couldn't leave and I had to just stick it out. No matter how, even when I used to go back on, you know, go back to London and for like short trips and stuff to see, to see my family, my mum would always be like, you know, you can always come back. You know that, you know, you have, sure you have your, your ticket, you can always come back, you can always come back. And every time my mum my would feel, you know, I sounded ill or I, something seemed off with me, she'd be like, just come back, just come back. But I just wouldn't. Like I was adamant that I was going to stick this through, despite the fact that I had you know, horrible experiences with work as well. And you know, maybe at the times when I wasn't getting paid, when I was broke to the teeth, you know, I was, you know, I was humbled. Like not that I, I was, like I was, for goodness sake, I was comfortable, I had my own room in my mum's house, although I was living in my mum's house, but I was comfortable to now come and be living. I lived in, a, in a, an apartment, well, an apartment in a room with a bunk bed and I was sharing one <laughs> one shower with, with with how many women in on like on one floor it was so i've been you know if you want to go there i've been there but um <laughs> but honestly every time i look at my journey i'm just so thankful i'm so thankful because in my wildest dreams in my wildest imaginations i would never have believed number one that i would have even left like i did because it would huh? what do you want to have Biscuits and my peanut. Okay, enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, mum life. Um, I would never have believed that I would, number one, that I would have left like I did in terms of I wasn't really the risk taking type. I didn't like to be uncomfortable. Um, you know, I hadn't even travelled that much. So, and I'd only been to, since obviously I was born in Nigeria, since being there, I think I, I, since being in England, I'd been back to Nigeria twice. So it wasn't something like I was there regularly. Um, so, you know, it, it was just, it wasn't like, it was totally out of character, which is what made me believe even more so that 
this is a spirit led thing i feel i feel like i really i've been on this journey with god and god has really led me like again like you know i said to, i said again that you know that i didn't have a place to stay until like the day before i left and you know it was such a blessing to have you know um the family friends that i stayed with and their house was amazing and beautiful before I, it was before the bunk bed <laughs> but it was you know uh, that was a nice transition because it was you know really lovely house and everything just the way that that happened was just god like so many things that have happened to me on, on this journey has been god like even meeting my husband here i never thought that I, you know people would joke about that oh isn't is going to go and find her nigerian man her nigerian husband i was like oh please whatever i really thought that i would you know probably go back to the uk and meet somebody there or meet someone here that was from the uk i didn't i didn't, I didn't envision that i would just meet my husband here and god has you know has surprised me has shown me himself over and over again so you know sometimes we are the ones that block our wildest dreams because we don't even allow ourselves to dream so wildly because we don't even because of our characters if you're like me and you're not someone that, you're someone that you don't really like to be uncomfortable you're not really a risk taker so you just feel like mm, let me just be safe you play it safe and and logical and honestly like with my walk with my walk with Christ and you know and being on this journey nothing about God is logical I can't fathom how he thinks I can't fathom why I should do certain things or why certain things happen but what I do know is that ultimately is for my very best and and that's what I've seen and I just want to encourage anyone that has wild wild dreams like dreams that seem so like uh, is it even possible especially like those of us that are in Nigeria and you're thinking that oh you feel so limited by what you see do not limit yourself don't limit your dreams allow yourself to dream allow yourself to believe because yes it may seem like oh it's rhetoric oh god will do it but honestly god can do it obviously you have to faith without works is dead you need to put your work in put your work in trust god um be faithful like pray and you know allow him to just move you and lead you and trust me he will surprise you. I'm sure that like, you probably hear many testimonies of people and you just think, oh, whatever, how did they do it? But honestly, it just starts with that seed of faith in believing that, you know what, that wild thing, I can get it. I'm still on this journey. Like, I, but God has done so much for me. He has, he has surprised me over and over again. The things that I came here to do, I've done them and then some. I didn't expect to do as much as I've done out here. And I'm just so grateful I'm so grateful and I'm so grateful to be on this journey and no matter how my journey changes as long as I know that God is leading it I'm cool I'm just cool to be here for the ride I'm happy to be alive and here for the ride and just allow God to see the allow, allow myself to, and just to be allowed to see what God is doing in my life so I just want to encourage you guys foolish wild dreams oh you can be you'll be surprised what God wants to do so yeah that's you know that's that's i had to share that with you guys just let you know comment below and let me know if you guys have wild dreams that you've just kind of put on the back burner and why and or if you are living if you believe that you're living your dream or you're you're working towards it let's encourage one another because those wild dreams those impossibilities mm -hmm. it makes a sense it makes a sense oh oh i wish you could see the end but we can't and and because we can't see the end you have to take that leap of faith mind you wisdom that leap of faith has to be led by wisdom so yeah but yeah that's it you know i just wanted to share that with you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm about to go and chill you know it's my birthday it's my birthday not today it's coming up it's my birthday it's my birthday 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 and i might just have a birthday vlog I don't, I, i'm not planning on doing anything really but you know, I'll still share my activities with you anyway, guys. But I'm excited. I'm about to be a birthday girl. You know, June is my mum. June the 8th. You don't know. You don't know the MySpace. <laughs> um, I'm done now. Okay, bye. <laughs> I had to go.